Welcome to this week's episode of the show, everybody. I am delighted today to be joined by Anita Favang. She is a mum of four who has been juggling being an amazing mum with also being the founder of Baby Sensor, which is a high tech company providing safety for parents. She's an entrepreneur, she's an innovator, she's a fascinating lady, and Anita is here today to share more about her journey, her story, and what she's bringing to parents. Anita, a massively warm welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. We're really glad to have you. I would love for you to share with our listeners just a little bit about your journey and to become the founder of a high tech company um, in the parenting space as well, whilst being a mum of four is pretty impressive. Uh, what, yeah, what attracted you into that world in the first place? And how did you get to here? Well, it started many, many years ago, actually. Not a lot of people know that because it was... Uh... I had a three-year-old and a newborn, and I was struggling to try and give attention to the three-year-old whilst the baby was asleep. And I was just not present with the with the three-year-old and just thinking about, is the baby okay? And I had the choice whether to go and check and possibly wake the baby or just sit there and not enjoy the three-year-old who finally got the attention. So that's uh, many, many years ago. They are now actually 23 and 19. Wow. So uh, (laughs) that's when the idea came in the first place. Um, I I did something. It was like a Princess Trust Young Entrepreneur or something. And we actually won that competition in Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, with the best idea. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And because it was a television program where we presented this on the Sunday, I was absolutely sure by the time I had my now seven-year-old that this product was in the market because the technology was kind of there and I thought somebody would have made it. So it started off again, um, like I said, seven years ago now. Yeah. Uh, and I had a new partner and yeah. a new baby. Yeah. Strong and healthy, nothing wrong with him. But my partner, Adonne, his name is, and we would watch Netflix for like half an hour and he'd be stopping and saying, is the baby okay? And I was yeah. like, I'm sure he's fine. And yeah. he's like, how do you know? Are you sure? I'm going to go and check. And then, he, sure enough, he'd go and like make a sound opening the door or even worse, if he was in the in the push chair, he was told in the hospital and with the health visitors to check behind the neck mm-hmm. whether, whether it was the right temperature. And I thought, mm-hmm. gosh, he would he would have a cold hand and sometimes oh. wake the baby. And I, it was driving me mad. So I thought, <laughs> oh, I have to get some something to stop this. So um, yeah. that's how it started, uh, like properly. So I went out, checked the market, bought a few units. Of, now my competitors and uh, I found that they did not do the job because I wanted to know on the phone if something was wrong I wanted to know so I wanted a baby call which we already had but I wanted something on the vitals I wanted something on whether the the things that he was checking basically is too hot is the baby breathing that sort of stuff Or, or does he have a pulse you know when they're sleeping really like yeah. well that's yeah. you can't really see that they're alive basically so he was like oh I don't know anyway so that was um I was testing and I found we had some some units that made him more worried rather than helping him relax because there were loads of false positives so okay. he would get like a notification or an alarm in the night and he'd be like oh go on. so uh, yeah that was the story behind why I made baby sensor Amazing. And it's such, you're, you know, so many parents feel that way. And I know I did. And to be honest, even now, there have been times where I check on my children who are at this point in time, 11 and 13. Yes. And I'll still go like, is everything okay in there? Especially if they've been under the weather and you just, you know, you do. And, and to know that you don't need to worry or go in and it's like, can I hear the breathing? Can I, can I see that chest moving? Um, yeah, a lot of parents probably wouldn't want to admit that they worry about that kind of thing, but I bet lots of them do. And I think we're born like that. I don't think yeah. we're, I mean, it's not, 
it's got nothing to do with facts, you know, like cot death. It's been reduced massively over the last few years. But I think, yeah. I mean, now with, with my five-year-old, I remember the same feeling, carrying that little baby seat out of the hospital towards the car. I felt the same, you know, that you just yeah. want to protect that little baby yeah. and you do anything you can to make sure the baby's safe. And yeah. I don't think that disappears, whether it's likely something will happen or not. It's kind of yeah. there. I think it's kind of in your DNA as being a parent. And I, I yeah. think it doesn't disappear even if the child is 13. I think it's still there. And, yeah. and I should know having somebody's moved out, I still think about him and worry. <laughs> and yeah, I think definitely. it's part of the job, to it be It just honest. changes. It's natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it carries on, but in different ways, I suppose, mm -hmm. as they grow. Um, but such an amazing product. And that's, there's so much technology involved in that. Because like you said, you tested things. They were giving false positives, which creates more concern and alarm. Um, and to come to... Uh, a, a product where you've got that accuracy you've got those vitals like that's some pretty serious tech there that's um I'm sure that's not been easy <laughs> I mean I don't understand any of the tech to be honest but I do understand what parents feel like and yeah. I do understand what other parents feel like because yeah it wasn't just me feeling like that you could you could recognize that feeling yeah the one thing to protect your baby is kind of um, everyone's got it. And yeah. being a sociologist is my background. I am interested in how people make choices. Why do they buy the stuff they do? And I, I'm really genuinely interested in people. So yeah. it was great for me to then interview loads and loads and loads and hundreds of parents. Um, Amazing. And also being in the baby groups, I keep joking that this is like one of the few businesses where it's a good thing to get yeah. two babies <laughs> in a row, where it's, it's almost impossible to combine being like an entrepreneur and having young babies. But in this business, I think it's an exception because you get yeah. to, you sit there and you breastfeed together and you share like genuine stories and you yeah. understand the group in a way that's, it's quite unique. Yeah, um, definitely. So I think yeah. that's what I'm kind of bringing to the table in this company. But I've had to, right from the start, know that I'm not the best in the technology. I'm, I don't know the commercialization bit. I don't know the finance bit. But I do know how the customers think. And I do know that I need the best tech people in the world in yeah. order to make the best product in the world for the family. So yeah. I've been very aware and very good at finding really, really clever people that's amazing I'm I love that and I think that's the right that's the thing to do that's what entrepreneurs do though it's you don't always have to have all the answers yourself but if you have the vision you know the goal you know the outcome that you're looking for um and then you source the right support to make that happen and mm. um it, I find that really inspiring because I have ideas like yours that you know where I think well is that possible and how could that be made and I know it would be amazing but I couldn't create it, but somebody could. And it's if you can think it, you can it can happen, right? You can make it happen. So um it's so inspiring that you've done all of that and built this company whilst being a mum of four um <laughs> as, as well. Um how do you find um the parents find the product? Like what what's been the feedback? Like I know you can attach baby sensor to push chairs it's mobile you can use it in any environment and like just yeah I'd love to know a little bit about the parents experience I, of it what they're saying is I mean this is the this is the baby core bit this yeah. is the wristband bit which has got the yeah. sensors I think the feedback is that the new the, with the newborns what yeah. they are using the most is this bit and it's like a this is what's measuring oxygen level, it's measuring heart rate, it's me measuring the skin temperature. And yeah. then you get the info on the app so you can see that everything's okay. And that's what they that's what they do most of the time. That they yeah. look look on here, see that everything's okay. And they do that, they're more interested in the pulse and the oxygen level in the beginning. And yeah. then later on as the baby's growing and moving into their own room, they more interested in the baby call thing yeah and then they saying what's really useful is in the beginning like i said it's a sense of it it makes them relax it makes them sleep better because they know that 
they can trust the technology after using yeah. it for a bit they can really see that they will get notified if something is out of the normal range so yeah I think also the fact that we've got this 4G eSIM card, a lot of parents say they appreciate it because they can live their lives a bit more like normal and still feel that the baby is safe. So they're out and about more, they're out in the car mm -hmm. because then you're not depending on Wi-Fi in order to get the info. Yeah, that's amazing. That gives it, yeah, access anywhere, anytime. Um, I know from a sleep professional um perspective this is the kind of thing that helps parents to step back like you said when your husband was accidentally waking the baby by checking on them and and almost like fussing too much but actually we talk about that sometimes just just hang back like they're just settling or they're, they're okay and sometimes we can accidentally cause disturbances or um fuss too much or we hear a sound and we go rushing in when actually if we just know oh it's okay they're okay or you know you you know that all their vitals are fine there's nothing wrong yeah. um I always loved my video monitors because I used to just, I'd hear a sound, I'd click it on, I'd look and I could visually see like, okay, they're fine. There's just a dream. They're just making a little sound in their sleep. And it really does help us, like you say, stay calm and step back and let them find their, their own rhythm with their sleep and to settle without us going in with a good intention of helping them or resettling them, but then accidentally creating more stimulation and more disturbance. So um, I know that myself and all, you know, our sleep expert community will be like, this is just great for that. It really helps to support parents with um, encouraging better sleep as well. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, it's the last thing you want is to disturb your baby, you see? but it's really hard. It's easier said than done to just say relax and yeah. don't worry, he's fine. When you've had that thought and you're wondering, is he okay? Is he too cold? Is he too hot? Whatever you're, you're thinking about. It's very, it's very hard then to be present and enjoy your sleep or your partner or Netflix yeah. or the other kids. Yeah. So yeah. uh, I, c I can really relate to that, but um, yeah. but I can see definitely see what you mean about disturbing rather than yeah. helping the baby, and um, and I think um, not being. I mean, I've had some um, some parents out there who who said you know they were they had the injections and they were a bit under the weather and and they were looking a bit unwell you know not not sick sick but they were not sure whether it was okay and then just to check that the oxygen level is okay the pulse is okay is had them relax in the evening not take them to the a e for an unnecessarily visit that sort of thing so that's really good yeah, yeah it really is that that's such a good point actually like rushing off to emergency rooms and um out of hours clinics because of a worry that actually could have been settled with the technology in the home um that's not just going to calm a parent it's going to impact little one um disruption to them but also and the and the health services as well so it's kind of win-win how about um something i'm interested about is the temperature thing so with them um, the summer months and when in the UK we typically don't have air conditioning because it's not warm enough um maybe three days of the year you wish you had it but that's about all and we have times when it gets really hot briefly um and everyone of course goes what do we do because we're not used to that um and almost every year I have articles in the press about how you can keep your babies cool at night and all these things but the temperature is something parents do ask us about a lot with their sleep and are they too hot are they too cold how yes. should I dress them yeah. and of course they're all different as well yeah would it um it, it measures their body temperature right so even if it's a hot day hmm. our own body temperature can regulate and so it wouldn't start spiking and saying your child's too hot well, we don't we don't have body temperature. I mean, oh, okay. We only have skin temperature, so it's okay. Basically, what's on the skin, and the we skin. also have room temperature. And yeah. because of the reasons you're saying about, and because of hot countries as well, yeah. you don't want an alarm to go off every just because it's a warm one. Just because it's warm, <laughs> and yeah. it's not ideal sleep 
environment yeah that, we we put it into the ideal as the sort of green great zone where everything's normal and then we have yeah. the yellow notification now oh, you could check on your baby that sort of thing when it's a little bit out of the normal range and then yeah it's, if it's a red alert then it's really far off from what is seen as the ideal or the normal range yeah but on days like that because we don't want um so, for example, I don't know if you can see anything. Um, yeah, but you can see yeah, here. Yeah, I can see on the screen. We mm -hmm. made it really easy. This is the room temperature. I think uh, it's all in Norwegian for now. We have it in English as well, but we made it easy so that we can adjust. Okay, so you can control what yeah. should be um, okay at any given time. So you've got you can control the parameters on the exactly. app. Exactly. Amazing. Because because it's uh, it's in like an ideal sleep yeah. environment for a sleeping baby, and then of course it needs to be easy to make it. Um, so, yeah, you just adjust it. You can't obviously you can't see on the podcast, but you just really easily adjust it. Yeah, yeah. So that if you want to keep an eye on the pulse, for example, and the baby is is um, awake. Um, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily bother, so I'd probably switch it off easily yeah. as well. But if the baby's awake and moving about, you don't want to have alarms just because the heart, yeah. heart rate is up. Yeah. So we want to make it easy to adjust accordingly. So yeah. you know yeah. that your baby is okay, even if it's a hot day in the summer. If you're having you're a heat wave, yeah. Exactly. And you know that the room, you know, ideally we want the room at, say, 18 degrees C, but you, you're like, do you know what? It's going to be 27 tonight and there's nowhere can cool the room down anymore. And so we know that that's okay and not that there's something wrong. So you can adjust the um, parameters on the app. Like, yeah, that's really, that's that's brilliant. But, but like you said, the body does do some adjustments for themselves, luckily. So the skin yeah. temperature probably should be okay-ish. Yes. Unless they got loads of cover around it, which you probably shouldn't have too many blankets on a, warm in, day. You know, on a hot day like that. <laughs> no. That's yeah, I love I really like that. It's um it's like it's customizable um depending on the situation as well. So yeah, as to as to what is ideal. Um amazing. Such a uh sense of peace and calm for parents with this definitely that's the plan that's our goal that's what we're here for amazing so i think um anita i'd love to know from you as an innovator that has created such an, an amazing piece of technology with your team like what do you have other do you have other things do you have other ideas in the pipeline or is this because i know what it can be addictive like oh, i've just had this brilliant idea that want to bring to life like is there more to come from you or is this your is this is your baby definitely <laughs> to come you know I have four babies I should probably have four yeah as well. <laughs> I've had um I've had some EU funding to create the next 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 level <laughs> this yeah. is what I made now is uh, advanced baby call but yeah. uh, we made the next step level that's um probably going to be in the market in two or three years so yeah if you want to have some highlights on that what that is supposed to be doing is that it's a camera and we're measuring um, important bits from the camera which is yeah. very highly innovative and awesome. it's created especially in the beginning to help premature babies Oh, or wow. the parents rather, because the yeah. going from the hospital to home, it's too much because you had all the monitors, you've had the best doctors, you've had everyone helping you looking after your baby with the best technology. Yeah. And then you go home and you have to kind of just keep an eye on your baby and it's overwhelming, it's too much. So we have more parents with premature babies having... Um, you know, antenatal depression, anxiety, all these sort of things. And even the dad's got big problems because it's yeah. overwhelming having to care yeah. for that one baby and also if you have other baby or other children it's yeah. it's too much so we're we are aiming to help that group in particular and yeah. with our it's a product that we call pre-care yeah so Amazing. it's um I it's think it's exciting. it you, is exciting yeah. I think it's um like you said though you, you're 
you are helping the mental well-being of the parents who are you know that have these high levels of anxiety and and worry in those early weeks and that's that's huge um I I think that's amazing I love that um I was gonna ask you what was I thinking then it just sparked a question in me um about this and the the development of the technology it slipped my mind it will come back to me I just said like a I think great helping question. with the mental well-being of parents it's like it's been my aim since I was a teenager myself yeah I just, it's been if uh, as close as I can get to a life mission it's helping people with mental health and I think helping parents relax sleep better so that's why I'm a big fan of sleep nanny as well is because yeah. of what you do and the importance of sleep for yeah. well-being for the ability to care for the baby to get that you know the magic of babyhood or yeah to enjoy the sibling still you know with all the overwhelm of the new baby all that combination to be a great parent in the most important few weeks in life it's crucial for mental as well as physical well-being for the whole future and for yeah. society as a whole to have parents be at their best in those difficult weeks mm. it's so so important and i think sleep is like one of the main ingredients for also for me as a background in child protection i think to prevent any sort of child protection issues this is the most important things we can do so mm. it's great speaking to you doing the same so aiming for the same having kind of the same vision making a huge difference in the most yeah. important time of, it's it's really cool it That's is why i love your products as well. oh and yours no I, it really is and it yeah the the well-being aspect is is huge and it's so important and not just for the little one's development um and how they grow and their mental well-being, but the parents too. And I love that your products really support that. I also love that you're using technology for good. Do you know what I mean? It's like leveraging the advances that we have in tech now, the things that we can make happen. Like I said before, like you can think it up and you can actually make it happen and make it into a product and leveraging that for something as good and as wholesome as people's well-being. Um, it's with so much conflict for parents these days around tech and overuse of tech but actually we live in a time where if we use use it for the right things it can benefit us in so many ways and this is just one example of that taking that technology yes you've got a smartphone there that can give you that information right in the palm of your hands this is you don't have to go back too far for that to have been a wildly crazy idea that you would never have been able to imagine and now you can you can you can get the kind of information that you would normally have to check into a hospital and be wired up to masses of sensors just to get that data you can strap something to your little one's wrist and you can get that data on your smartphone and and I I, I think it's really important that we celebrate the um, plus sides to technology and how that it, it you know how it can really help us I mean, to, I agree with you, but I, I think um, generally, I mean, with my back, background again within child protection and doing what I can for the babies to have the best parents possible and for the parents to enjoy their baby, I think it's like a win-win. But how you do it, whether it's having your mother-in-law there for months to help you or whether it's the sleep nanny or whether it's a proper nanny, I, I don't care. Or, whether it's technology, I just think technology makes it more accessible for more people. Yeah, uh, I don't know, hiring a full time nanny uh, in the night for like months. I mean, I, I yeah. can't. See, most people couldn't afford that, but mm. it doesn't really matter. Whatever helps you. Yeah. It, if it helps you relax, if it helps you sleep, I don't care whether it's technology, whether it's your neighbor, whether it's your sister, whether it's your mum, whether it's whoever yeah. it doesn't matter it, as long as you can relax sleep yeah. and enjoy the baby I think it's crucially important but that, yeah. I think when you have the technology this is my take on it it can be too much technology absolutely too much phone 
that's why we didn't want to, for example, to have a camera because we didn't want people to sit and watch the phone. We wanted them to watch their partner's eyes or, yeah. <laughs> or Netflix or something or yeah. enjoy a bath without having that technology and trust that you would get notified or an alarm if something was really wrong. So our take on it is that generally it's too much technology, but if we do have technology that is accurate, that you can trust, that can make you relax, I feel that we're obliged to help people with it. Yeah, yeah. And you're absolutely right. You know, there's not everybody has either the money or, you know, the um, ability to bring help in and not everybody has extended family around them and and all the help and support and in this day and age so many more parents are working like both parents are working mm. um lots of hours without any additional help or support or family nearby um and so often we do look for these sort of accessible transportable options um that you say you know as you say you can put in the palm of people's hands without that yeah I do envy when people say yes I've got several family living a few streets away and people around all the time and I think well that's a different you know that's a different scenario (laughs) you've got lots of hands on deck but not everybody does I see you know many single single mothers who haven't got any help in the home and they're doing it all themselves and they're working and so the added worry without even anybody to share the worry with mm. um can be huge so this is like you say an accessible way to help and support with that which it's is saying, just beautiful uh, it, it was is is this saying it takes uh, what a village a village to a child or something yeah but you don't often hear people feeling they have that village there and especially mm. two in the morning when when they might need that auntie or the neighbor or whatever you can't you know, you don't it's, you don't call people at two in the morning, mm. um, and we could wish that we had the village. But like you said, more and more people are living by themselves. Yeah, and also people live in cities far away from their parents yeah. or family. And we are we are becoming more and more individualized. And uh, but we do have the technology. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful that you've brought this to life, you know, from an idea, from an experience as a mother as well, and to then see that. And I I also love the fact that you had the idea a long time ago and then thought that must have been done. And then it hadn't. And you're like, actually, no, it still hasn't been done. So good for you for you know, finding a way, making it happen and, and bringing this into the world. And I hope that we can share this with more and more people and that more people can understand um, what they can have. And it's not, you know, not as a, um, not even as a kind of a, a nice to have, but actually as a well-being assistant, you know, something that can actually support their their nervous system, their well-being and, and everything. I think it's, um, I think it's really amazing what you're doing. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm very proud of the product as it is now. And we also had feedback from some parents saying they want the camera. So we've decided now to make that as an add-on because they would feel safer like you were sharing about that. You could see some things you can see on the camera, especially when they get to that age where they're trying to climb out of the crib or whatever. But uh, before, and I think there are also things you cannot see on the camera, which is the reason why we made this wristband, yeah. which you can put put on the leg. I don't know whether you should call it a wristband, if you can have it on the arm or wherever, but, but yeah. 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 The things you can't, like you say, actually, the things you can't see. Is your child um, fussing and standing up in their crib because they're just figuring things out and it's a behavioral thing or is it because they're trying to tell you that something hurts or they're too hot or they're too you know that that something's off and Mm -hmm. and so I love that that it gives you the things you can't see so yeah it's amazing like you were saying earlier as well sometimes they do complain a little bit or they have like a cry but it might not necessarily be a distressed cry it could just Mm. some you know some kids they are light sleepers and then they're trying to calm themselves down by making a bit of a noise you know all about this but then to know that the pulse is sort of 
within the normal range it's not in like real distress that can yes. help you maybe wait that minute longer before you go in and possibly disturb before the you day. rush so in that's really handy that's a you really know, valid point yeah because you you it's so easy to think that a cry means a problem or a cry means um I always say not all cry means sadness not all cries mean um that they're you know distraught about something they're just communicating and sometimes it could just be a a, a fuss or we often say sometimes a little one especially babies they'll cry out or they'll make a noise to kind of say I really want to go to sleep I just don't know how to do this or I've woken up and I'm not sure how to get back to sleep because maybe they've been rocked to sleep or they something's helped them to lull off. And they're like, I don't know how to do this. Um, I need some help here. And that's what the cry is. But when we don't know and we can't read those cries all the time, it can be hard to know how to respond. I love that your um, your sensor can give more indicators to that. And like you say, it's like, no, this baby is not distressed. They're not you know then they're not in the realms of um, you know high levels of cortisol or anything like that they're just fussing a bit and you can see this by their pulse rate and so on so that's yeah it's oh it's amazing I think I love having all the I like being in the know I'm, I'm one of those parents where I'm like give me all the information like <laughs> I would be um Obviously, mine are probably a bit old now, but I would definitely be putting these on my on my babies if they were younger. What do you think me. you'd use it for? Would you use it out and about, or how do you think you'd use it? Yeah, you um, relax unit. That's a really good question. I would probably more so at home than than out and about, but then that maybe because I um quite a home person. Like I was probably with my little ones. If I was out and about, we would usually be doing things. Yeah, being in the sleep industry, most of their sleeps were at home, so there wasn't so much. Um, but then I say that I think if there were, if they were ever a bit under the weather, or I was one, you know, had concerns about other aspects of their vitals, then I might be like, we'll just have this on anyway, and yeah. then I'll I'll know. So then, do you think you'd mm. use it in the car or? Yeah, cars are great. Yeah, especially on long journeys. Yeah. Because of that worry of are they getting too warm or, or even distressed. Nursery is another one. I would want it on them at nursery. If I was working and they were in nursery, I'd want I'd be like, they're in somebody else's care right now, but I can track their vitals on my on my phone, on my app. We had we are very aware of not being a medical device, not wanting to be diagnosing anything not yeah. wanting to scare people you know mm. um so we're very aware of that but we do have stories where they have used it in kindergarten and the parents and the people in the kindergarten were able to to catch uh, a very high pulse and some some things yeah in that way so i understand how that can be relaxing if you have had an incident of epilepsy or a, yeah. a fit of some kind or you're not sure whether they're a bit under the weather they, whether they're getting better or worse that sort of thing to keep an eye on that mm. and while with the little ones in kindergarten I think it can help you relax at work and be able for you to get on with your life in a in a better way yeah. at least we've had some customers saying about that yeah no that's a, it's all it's all about that isn't it about being relaxed calm parents usually lead to calm children calm little ones um just feeling better all around all of that leads to better sleep better well-being and better health overall so uh yeah but uh, you also really believe that your well-being is affecting the baby's stress yeah. levels right yeah yeah I think that's fascinating yeah. and I'm absolutely convinced that there's such a strong connection between yeah what's around the baby and how the baby's feeling yeah so our energy really like they pick up on it don't they the they can sense it in how we behave and I I honestly think even just in our in our nervous system if we are harboring anxiety um worries frustrations even if we speak calmly to our little ones and come across calm they can sense when 
some things off I think within within us and and then sometimes it does come out where maybe we are distracted or um a bit snappier or less present but I just think without that even just our the vibe we give off they can pick up on that from a very young age they're they're very intuitive aren't they I remember it affecting my breastfeeding even I had problems Mm getting enough milk because I was so stressed out Mm. and that's Mm. like obviously that's affecting the baby yeah yeah it does I'm sure oh it's fascinating it really is absolutely fascinating I I I love having this conversation with you and um, I'm really grateful for you like coming to share your story your journey I think it's inspiring for I know we have other mums that listen to this that are entrepreneurial and creative minded so I know even hearing your story of how you took an idea through motherhood and brought that to life but also for our parents of you know new babies right through who who are um um, maybe struggling with some of these anxieties and, and can see that there are, are devices and there are things you can do to actually calm that down and for the, the greater good of everyone. And yeah, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing all of this with us today, Anita. We really do. Thanks for having me. It was lovely being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. And if people want to look at Baby Sensor and find out more about you, where would be the best place for them to go? What, where should we send people? Babysensor.com, I think. Perfect. We will put the link. It's easy to remember, but we will put the link in the show notes as well for easy access. Um, but we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, we're on. I think it, I think I'm on TikTok as well. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! All the places you can find so. Anita yeah. and Baby Sansa. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure, Anita. Thank you. Thank you. So just.